Hi, Algebra 2 Trig Advanced students. This is a chapter review for the Chapter 3 test that you are going to be taking very soon. So let's get started. Um, the first question says, find a polynomial function that is factor in factored form that has a degree of 5 that has negative 1 as a 0 with multiplicity of 3, uh, 4 as a 0 with multiplicity of 1 and zero has a multiplicity of one also. So we're gonna start off with um, f of x is equal to, uh, let's see, we're gonna start off with negative one is a zero. So that's gonna be x plus one, okay? And it says we have multiplicity of three, so that's gonna go up here. Four is a zero, so this is gonna be x minus four, and the multiplicity is one. We don't need a one there, but you, you can put that there, if that makes you feel better. And also, zero is a multiplicity of one, so that's going to be right there out front. Uh, yeah, that's it. Moving on. Number two, write a polynomial function um, that has a degree of four with rational coefficients of i and negative two uh, plus, or excuse me, minus root five. So we're going to start off with f of x um, is equal to uh, x plus i. And that's going to be, oops x plus i, um, and you know i's and roots both come in pairs. So we, if we have x plus i, then we're going to have x minus i. Um, additionally, for 2 minus the square root of 5, that's going to be x minus the quantity 2 plus the root square root of 5 and the quantity x minus 2 minus the square root of 5. So you've got a plus and a minus there. So you have both, okay? Um, so if I wanted to multiply this out, that would be mean, but let's just do that for practice sake so that I know that you can do it. Um, multiplying this out, you know x times x, we've got x squared. Uh, minus i plus i, those are gone. Then we have minus i squared. And you know that minus i squared, um, i squared is negative one, right? So that'll be minus negative one, so that's plus one. So these two first terms here multiplied together make x squared plus one. Um, the other two, that's a little bit more work, okay? So I'm going to do that like separately over on the side. Um, first, I need to uh, distribute. So we're going to have x minus 2 minus the square root of 5, and we're going to have x minus 2 and then plus the square root of 5. Um, we're going to get x squared uh, minus 2x plus x root 5. And then we're going to have this time, oops, then I'm going to go negative 2 times this. I'm not doing this middle part yet. I'm not doing this bottom part yet. Let me fix this. Minus the square root of 5, and this will be x. So I'm going to do the middle term, okay? So negative 2 times x is another negative 2x. Uh, this times this is going to be a negative 4, positive 4. So positive 4. And uh, let's see here, we have negative two times that, which is negative two root five. Then we're gonna multiply this stuff. This times this, which will be a negative x root five. Uh, this times this, which will be a positive two root five. And then this times this, the last two terms, it's gonna be a negative five. So let's see what we've got. Um, it looks like I have an x squared so we have x of x is equal to x squared plus 1. And then we've got um, an x squared. Check. That's done. Uh, these are going to cancel. These are going to cancel. Um, looks like I have a minus 4x. So minus 4x. And that's negative 2 and negative 2. And then I've got a negative 5 and a positive 4, which is a negative 1. So now, I still have to keep multiplying these out because I'm trying to find the polynomial function. Um, f of x is equal to, now I have to multiply again. So that's going to be um, x to the fourth minus 4x to the third minus x squared. So I just did that. Okay. Then we've got a plus 1x squared uh, minus 4x and then minus 1. So hopefully we're done. We've got x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. Looks like my x squareds are going to cancel. I get minus 4x and then minus 1. 
So there's my polynomial equation, uh, my polynomial function. Okay, that's to the fourth power. The next question says, um, find all the possible zeros of the equation um, 2x cubed plus 6x squared. So we're going to use the rational zeros theorem, and it's basically going to be this, these uh, multiples over these multiples right here. So for these, we're going to say, well, it could be plus or minus 1. It could be plus or minus 3. We, it's going to be over the factors of 2, which are going to be plus, did I say multiples? I meant factors, plus or minus 1, and then plus or minus 2. So all of the factors would be 1 over 1. So that's going to be plus or minus 1, uh, and then 1 over 2. So we got plus or minus 1 half. Then we have 3 over 1, so that's going to be plus or minus 3, and then we've got 3 halves, so plus or minus 3 over 2. So those are all my factors, uh, or my possible zeros. Um, they would be uh, 1, negative 1, 1 half, uh, negative 1 half, 3, negative 3, 3 halves, and negative 3 halves. Um, just a note, you can leave your answers in this form right here. Uh, solving this inequality, um, first step, set equal to zero. So we have 2x to the second power minus 5x minus 3 is greater than zero. Um, I'm going to try to factor that. Uh, factoring, you can use a quadratic formula. I like to factor better. 2x here, x. Um, I'm looking for three, just my choices are one and three or three and one. I'm going to try three here and one here because I see that that's going to be a 6x, and I'm trying to get a 5, negative 5, so that's going to be a negative here, um, positive here. Um, let's check. x and then negative 6 is negative 5. Okay, so my zeros for this equation are going to be um, a positive 3, and then 2x equals, what, negative 1 half, and then we have a negative 1 half. Okay, so I'm going to choose 0. I'm going to plug in 0, which goes in between here, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And so you ask yourself, is negative 3 greater than 0? So right here, is my value greater than 0? No. So it's not greater than 0. So then it's down here. And because I have no multiplicities, nothing's bouncing off. So it looks something like this. So go back to the original equation, which is right here. Because we actually have two separate equations in here, we have two questions. By plug, the first thing you're going to do is plug in 0 or any number that's in between your two numbers. Ask yourself, is this true? Is this number greater than 0? No, it's not. So it's down here. So therefore, you go back to the original question, the equation that's set equal to 0, and you say, where is my equation greater than 0? That's what you're asking. Okay, so it's going to be greater than 0 over here and over here and so you're going to list that and so therefore you're going to say well that's going to be from negative infinity to negative one half and also uh, three moving to infinity and that's your answer um, the next question says use synthetic division to find the quotient and remainder um, for that problem okay so we're going to use synthetic division which means this number is going to be here. So we're going to have a 5 here. Um, this, though, is a little bit tricky because I'm missing a value. I'm missing a squared. So we do have a 3. We have no squared value. We have a negative 12. And we have um, 7. And so 1 and then 7. So let's do that. Okay, so we have 3 here. 3 times 5, 15. Add down. Uh, 15 times 5 is what 75 and then we're going to take 75 and we're going to subtract 12 so then we're going to get uh, 3 and 6 um, 63 and so for doing this problem right here um, 63 times 5 so we're going to go 63 times 5 um, what is that 315 is that 315 and then we're going to add down and so I get 322. And so then that's it.
we're going to plug that value in. So we're going to have, we found the quotient. So that's going to be, we started with a cube. So this is going to be x squared. So we have 3x squared plus 15x plus 63 and then plus 322 all over x minus 5. Okay, that's our remainder, by the way. So our quotient is this part right here. So if you're asked like separately what's your quotient, you would just say 3x squared plus 15x plus 63. What's your remainder? 322. What's your divisor? x minus 5, etc. Um, use synthetic division to figure out if this is an actual zero of this function. So we're going to plug that in right here. We're going to go 2 plus i. And then we have 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, so this is work. We don't have any, um, we don't have to plug in any placeholders. So we have 1, we have negative 10, we have 22, we have negative 2, and we have negative 35. So we're going to add down and multiply across. So adding down, I get 1. Uh, multiplying across, I get 2 plus i. So here is 2 plus i. Add down, I get negative 8 uh, plus i. So now I have to multiply across. So on the side, okay, I'm going to multiply this value with this value here. So I'm going to go 2 plus i times negative 8 plus i. Okay, so that's going to be negative 16 plus 2i uh, minus 8i and then plus i squared, which is negative 1. Um, so what is that? Negative 16. So I've got, looks like I have negative 17 minus 6i. Okay, so when I multiply these two terms together, this term here and this term here, I get negative 17, whoops, minus 6i. Okay, so minus 6i. Now I have to add down. So 22 uh, minus 17 is um, 5 minus 6i. And so now I have to multiply this term by this term. So again, I'm going to go 2 plus i, and then I'm going to multiply that by uh, 5 minus 6i, and I get 10 minus 12i plus 5i minus 6i squared, which means plus 6. So that means 10 plus 6 is what? 16, and then minus 7i. That's going to go here. Minus 7, oops, hold on. Uh, I forgot the 16. Um, 16, and then minus 7i. Add down. So that looks like when I add it down, I get 14, right? 14 minus 7i, and now I have to do this one more time to see if they uh, multiply. Let's see what I get. Um, 2 plus i, and then I'm going to get this value. Hold on. 2 plus i. Okay, so then we get 14 minus 7i. And so therefore we get 2 times 14 is 28. Uh, 2 times that is minus 4 time, minus 14i, right? Plus 14i, oh, those are gone. And then I got minus 7i squared. So minus 7i squared, i squared is negative 1, so that'll be plus 7. So 28 add 7. 28 plus 7 is 35. So when I multiplied these two together, I got 35. Add down, I got 0. Woohoo! Okay, well, that means that uh, 2 plus i, so you would say, let's finish this. Um, therefore, that means therefore, 2 plus i is a zero for that equation. Okay, next question. Uh, find the polynomial of degree four. Um, that has roots uh, two and negative two. Um, let's see, two and negative two, and then i. So basically, in doing that, we would say, let's see here, polynomial of degree four. So we're going to start off with f of x. And that's going to equal, we've got x plus 2, we have x minus 2, 
we know that we're going to have x plus i because they come in pairs, right? So then we have x minus i. So in doing this right here, we're going to have this equation um, multiplying everything out. Um, this is a difference of two squares, so we know that that's x squared minus 4. Uh, another difference of two squares with um, imaginary numbers, we have x squared plus 1. Multiplying all of that out, um, we are going to get, uh, what are we going to get? Let's see. This right here, x squared times x squared is going to be x to the fourth plus x squared minus 4x squared minus 4. Um, so f of x is equal to x to the fourth um, minus 3x squared and then minus 4. So here's my equation. Check. Now, the second half of the question says f of 1 is equal to 4. So if that's the case, then I would need to set this equal to 4. And I would say, well, 4 is equal to, plug in 1 for x, 1 to the 4th minus 3 times 1 squared minus 4. So 4 equals 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, uh, minus 4, which is negative 6, does not equal 4. So that's the value for that. But this right here is my equation where uh, we have a root 2 equals negative 2 and i. Find a fourth degree polynomial that has rational coefficients, fourth degree, that have roots here. So we're going to go with f of x is equal to, um, we have a 3i, so it'll be x minus 3i, it'll be x plus 3i, it'll be x minus 2, and it'll be x uh, minus 1. Okay, and so I'm not going to multiply that out for you. I mean, you're welcome to do that. Um, you're finding a fourth degree polynomial. These are the factors of the fourth degree polynomial. Um, just note that if it's, make sure it says whether it's in um, factored form or if it, if it says, you know, to put it in, uh, to, to actually put it in standard form. This one doesn't say that, so I'm just going to leave it in factored form, but just a note for that. Okay. Um, the next question says, factor the polynomial completely. Um, this one's a little bit tricky because it is to the fourth power. Um, we are going to try values or factors of 24. And I'm going to start with 3 or negative 3. Um, let's try 3. Uh, 1, negative 5, 10, negative 20, and 24. Um, plugging those values in, let's see here. 1, that makes 3. That makes negative 2. Multiply across, add down, multiply across, uh, what do I get? Negative 8, multiply across, negative 24. So we, we hit it right on the first chance. So, so far, we're trying to find all the factors. So we've got x minus 3, and then now we have this left. So that's going to be x to the third minus 2x plus 4. Wait a minute x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x and then minus 8 equals 0. Um, this actually is a grouping problem. I could factor that by grouping, meaning I can factor out an x squared, and then I've got x minus 2 uh, plus 4 times x minus 2. So this, when I factored this part right here by grouping, this x minus 3 comes back. Then I've got... Um, x squared, uh, looks like I have x squared minus 2, um, x minus 2, and then this becomes, add 4, plus 4, and then this becomes an x minus 2 equals 0. Um, this is not completely factored here because this value plus 4, x squared plus 4, if you set that equal to 0, you have x squared equals negative 4, so x equals the square root of negative 4, which is i root 2 plus or minus um, 2. Sorry, I'm sorry. You're taking the square root of 4, so it'll be i 
um, root four, which is plus or minus two i plus or minus two i. So therefore this value right here needs to be replaced with that. So now my final answer would be x minus three times x minus two, and then my new ones from this, which are gonna be x plus two i and x minus two i equals zero. And that's, and that is factoring it. So all of my factors would be three, uh, two, and then plus or minus two i. Um, okay, so for this question, um, we are asking you to find the equation for this. Okay, so, oops, that's not what I want. So finding the equation for that right there is going to be, um, first you need to plot like what are, where your x-intercepts, et cetera, um, where your asymptotes. So this looks like this is negative two. So this looks like it's negative one. So it looks like I got, I've got vertical asymptotes at x equals negative one. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals three. It looks like I have zeros, which are my x-intercepts at um, one zero. So that's gonna be um, at one zero, so one comma zero. Um, it looks like I have a y-intercept uh, at zero comma negative one. So let's start this equation. Um, let's start making this by f of x um, is equal to, let me put my x-intercept on top, which will be x um, minus one. It, okay, and then my asymptotes, which are vertical asymptotes, would be x uh, plus one and x minus three. Now, I have a feeling that if I plug this in, this definitely isn't gonna work, and I'm not gonna get the same graph if I plug this equation into Desmos or my calculator, and the reason is a couple of things. Number one, do you see this right here? This is bouncing off this graph. It's tangent at one zero. So right here, it's tangent. And what that means is that at my x-intercept, there is a two there that has to be squared. Um, additionally, I notice that on this graph, it's doing this, okay? Which means it's coming together, so it's close. So that means that those two coming together like that, that at that vertical asymptote, which is three, that also has to be squared, okay? So this is my final answer right here, and this does work, but I just wanna make sure that you understand that whenever a graph comes like this, and also, um, you know, is tangent, you have to make allowances for that. Um, okay, so for this problem here, I'm asking you to um, graph the following. Um, before I can graph this, I do need to factor it. Um, so I am going to factor this. Let me see if I can move this a little bit. Okay, so I am going to factor that. Um, let's factor this on the numerator to be x plus 4 and x minus 2. And on the denominator, um, again, that does look like it's a, it does look like I can possibly factor that by grouping. Let me see, x squared, and then I'd have x plus 1. If I factor out a negative 16, then I have x plus 1. Okay, so that did work, so let's do this. So this will be x plus 1 here, and then what's left is x squared minus 16, right? And then x plus 1, and you know that x squared minus 16 is a difference of two squares, so that's going to be x plus 4 and x minus 4. All right, so I'm going to erase this. Um, so now I've got my graph in factored form. Check. Um, Let's see, do I have any zeros? That's like the first question you should ask yourself. Are there any zeros? Um, there are. See that? Those are going to cancel out, and I'm going to get x minus 2 over uh, x plus 1 and x minus 4. Okay, so what that does for me is it gives me a hole at negative 4, comma, and then in order to find out the other value right here, 
where the hole is, I have to plug in negative four into the factored form. Make a note to yourself, plug into uh, factored form. You need to plug it into the factored form because when you factor, um, if you had plugged in negative four up to the top, you would have had zero over zero. And zero times anything is zero, so you have zero over zero, which is what we call inter indeterminate form, okay, which is not going to give you a whole value here. So we want to know exactly where that whole value is. We already know there's no value there. I just want to know exactly where is there no value. So if plugging in negative four, uh, negative four minus two is uh, six, negative six. Negative four plus one is... Um, negative three, and then negative four minus four is negative eight. So it is going to be a negative number. I've got the three of those. And then let's see, two goes into six three times, two goes into eight four times. My threes are going to cancel. Two of those cancel. It looks like I have one fourth, so negative one fourth. Okay, so that's where my zero is. <clears throat> okay, so this is my factored form here. Okay, so you that it's also very important for this because um, this is going to give me my vertical asymptotes. Had I just factored this and said, hey, all of these values on my denominator are my vertical asymptotes, I would have gotten that wrong. So these two here are my vertical asymptotes, and so they're going to be at x equals negative 1, but also at x equals 4. Okay, so I have two vertical asymptotes. Um, it is bottom heavy. See that x squared over x cubed. So my end behavior is um, my my end behavior, which is my uh, my y my uh, horizontal asymptote because it's it's going to be at y equals zero. So that's going to be at um, y equals zero. Um, my x-intercepts are what's left on the numerators. Those are my zeros. So that's going to be 2 comma 0. And then my y-intercept, I'm actually going to go back to the original equation right here. See that? And go, what's negative 8 over negative 16? And that's a half. So when x is 0, y is 1 half. Okay, so I've got so much information in here. Um... I could do sign pattern testing if I want. I don't want. Um, so let's put in all this stuff I know. I know that I have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. Okay, so we here we've got a ver vertical asymptote. Okay, I've got a vertical asymptote at 4. Quattro, so there's 4. Um, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, there's my y equals zero. I have um, an x-intercept at two zero, right there. And I have a y-intercept at zero one half, which means that my graph is crossing my x-axis, totally fine. You can cross a horizontal asymptote. You cannot cross a vertical asymptote or a slant asymptote. Okay. Now, do I have, so this is where you have to ask yourself, so, do I have any in my, uh, any multiplicities of even value, or, you know, like, that are going to do this, right? So if I don't have an, oh, no, something just happened. Um, this graph just tilted. Hold on. I don't know how to fix that. Anyway, um, I don't have any, this goes like that. I don't have any even multiplicities. So my graph is not going to come up like that, right? Because there's no even multiplicities. So that's not happening. So that means that my graph actually has to do this. It's not going up like that, so it's got to do this, okay? And it's not going to be from down below either for the same reason. And it's going to look like this. Cool. That's it. Um... Next question, uh, again, graph the following, and we are going to, um, I do notice something on this, though, that this is top-heavy, which does mean that I am not going to have a horizontal asymptote. It means that my asymptote is oblique, okay, which means that's going to be a little bit different. Um, first thing I want to do, though, is factor. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get x minus 3, x plus 2, and this is all over x plus 4. 
It means that I've got a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. So I'm going to put that in. 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Okay. And it means that I have two, I have no holes because I'm not crossing anything out, right? No crossing out. Um, two x-intercepts, one at 3, 0, and one at negative 2, 0. Uh, my y-intercept, you go to the original equation. There it is, negative 6 over 4, uh, which is going to be negative 3 over 2. So at 0, comma, negative 3 halves, I have a y-intercept right there. Um, I have x-intercepts at 3, 0 and at negative 2, 0. Ooh, this is looking tricky. Um, I'm thinking that right now I am going to have to divide because I notice this is top heavy and I need to find my other asymptote because I don't have a horizontal asymptote. I have an oblique or slanted asymptote because it's top. This is bigger than the bottom. So two is higher than one. So let's factor or actually not factor. Let's divide. I can use, um, uh, I can use synthetic division. I'm going to do that. We like that better. Everybody except Jex likes that better. Okay, so we have 1, uh, negative 1, and negative 6. And so we're going to go 1, negative 4. That makes negative 5. And what is that? 20? 20, 20, and that makes 14. But I am not using these values here. I am only using this here, meaning that I'm using enough to make a line, which is x. Remember how this was x squared? This is 1 less, x to the 1 minus 5. So here is my slanted asymptote. So that means that at 1, 2, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, there is where I start. And I'm going to go up 1, over 1, up, over, up, over, up, over, etc. Okay, so it looks like my other asymptote does this stuff. Okay. And this goes down. And so I've got my two asymptotes in there. And generally, like I said, um, if you remember that unless you have multiplicities of two, you're not going to have graphs that do this. So I see that three of my points right here are doing this. They're, this is happening. Okay. That's happening. Unless I have in a multiplicity that's even, it's not going to do this on this side. It's not going to happen. So therefore, my graph doesn't do that, okay? So I'm going to get rid of that. That's not happening because my graph doesn't have even multiplicities. So that leaves my graph to do this, okay? So my graph is up like that, down like that, and we're done, okay? Um, just a note, I do, I do want to say this. I want to do this for Jax just because he likes the long division better. Um, if doing this, we did x squared minus x minus 6, and this is x plus 4. You Doing the long division, x divides in x squared x, x times x, you have x squared plus 4x. Uh, subtract the quantity, first term cancels, uh, negative x uh, minus, um, what is that, 4x is going to be negative 5x. Bring down the 6. x times what is negative 5x, and that's going to be negative 5. So again, um, had you chosen the long division, you would have get, gotten the same slant, or we call this also an oblique asymptote, which is this one here that goes y equals x minus 5. That, that's that one. Okay? All right, cool. Um, this question right here is asking you... Um, Oh boy, to solve. And uh, we're going to factor this first, okay? So, and well, I mean, actually, the first thing you would do is set it equal to zero, which we it is already done. So now we're just going to factor. So we're going to go x um, minus 2 and x plus 1. And then down on the denominator, we're going to have an x plus 2 and an x plus 3. And that's less than zero. Um, so these are all my zeros. I have nothing canceling out, so I have no um, even multiplicities, okay? So try to draw a straight line. I'm going to try to do that. Uh, plug in, in, plugging in all my zeros, I've got negative 2 here. Well, actually a negative 3. 
and a negative 2 and a negative 1. And this one is giving me a positive 2. Okay. And I'm going to choose 0. I always choose 0 um, unless it's not on my graph. Um, so let's see here. 0 minus 2 is, so we're going to get negative 2 uh, times 1. I'm going to get 2 and plugging in 0, I get 3. And the question is, is negative, oh, these cancel, is negative 1 third less than 0? Is this value here less than 0? And your question is, um, is this less than 0? And it is less than 0, okay? So it is less than 0. So if it's less than 0, that means it's below, so it's going to do this. Because I don't have any um, even multiplicities, it's not like bouncing off this and going back down, okay? So then everything else is just doing this, okay? And so now you have to ask yourself, go back to the original equation and say, this question says, where is my equation less than zero? And so you're going to say, well, it's here and here. Well, where are you? And therefore, you are here, and you are at um, negative 3 to negative 2, and also negative 1 to 2. Um, I want to say two things. Number one, do you see how this is less than? Okay, that means that all of my answers, no matter what, are going to be parentheses. Okay, however, however, if I change the problem, okay, I want to change it now, and I'm going to change the problem to be less than or equal to zero, okay? And in that's the case, see, look at my denominator, two, and then we have x plus three. I just want to make note of this um, because we didn't talk about it this in class too much, but do you see this would be my answer? That would not be my answer. It would not be my answer because do you see this down here in this? These are my... Um, asymptotes. Those are my vertical asymptotes. And if this had, question had changed, and of course I'd still have the same numerator like this, of course, okay, but that's not, I mean, it's not even relevant. What I'm looking at is this denominator. You see how it would be um, less than or equal to? What happens there if it's less than or equal to is this. Um, then you would have brackets except for on the denominator. OK, because we would still have at negative three here, that would be a parenthesis, right? Negative three to negative two, also a parenthesis, because these are my asymptotes. And at negative three and negative two, you can't touch your asymptotes. OK, I can touch two. See this value? Um, positive two and negative one. Totally fine. Negative one, positive two can be brackets, but parentheses are where your asymptotes are. So make sure that you check your parentheses because when you're talking about greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you have to look at the denominator and see if there's any asymptotes that would affect your equation, okay? All right, so that's all I have for you today. Um, stay tuned for the station review uh, video that we're gonna be doing stations in class. So, um, I hope this helped. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I would just love to hear from you if you, um, if this video helped you in any way. I would love to hear that. All right, thanks so so much for watching.